Today, the wreckage on Wall Street continues for a third day in a row as Tesla, yes, Tesla, leads the market's favorite names deep into the red. But it's not all bad news for electric cars. Nikola's stock skyrockets after the hopeful disruptor teams up with one of the biggest names in Detroit. And finally, an unusual move from the healthcare sector. The CEOs of the leading companies developing a COVID-19 vaccine take a public stand to prioritize safety over political pressure. I'm Mackenzie Segalos, and this is CNBC After Hours. Another brutal day on Wall Street. Stocks posted their third negative trading session in a row as all three indices closed in the red. And today's biggest loser is right on theme of this sell-off. The Nasdaq, with all its mega cap tech names, plunged more than 4% as the tech sector takes a beating after months of outsized gains. Take a look at the losses for these market darlings over the past three trading sessions. Apple down 14%, Amazon down 11%, Microsoft down 12%, Nvidia down 17%. And then there's Tesla. That stock plunged a staggering 21%, and that's just today. The drop came after the company was excluded on Friday from the S&P 500 by the committee that decides on new additions to the index. And there was more bad news for Tesla today. Shares of Nikola, an electric vehicle company and hopeful Tesla competitor, surged more than 40% today after announcing a partnership with the consummate member of the auto industry's old guard, General Motors. GM stock popped as well, about 8%. So why are they teaming up? What does Nikola, a company with zero cars and next to no revenue, bring to the table for a giant of Detroit? CNBC's Phil LeBeau has all the answers. This deal between Nikola and General Motors is a huge one, and basically it's a win-win situation for these companies, and that's the reason both stocks moved higher on the announcement. For General Motors, it gets validation of its Altium battery technology platform. That is the electric vehicle platform that it's developing, not only for its electric vehicles, but now you're seeing that they're planning on using it with other automakers as well. It will use that technology as well as supply fuel cells to Nikola from the facility that General Motors is building, likely in Northeast Ohio. So what does Nikola get out of this deal? Well, for Nikola, it will now have its electric pickup truck, the Badger, which comes out in 2022, built by General Motors. And they'll be able to use General Motors expertise when it comes to developing electric vehicles and manufacturing electric vehicles. It will not have to spend billions of its own money in order to build a manufacturing plant. That's a long, costly process that Nikola will not have to engage in. General Motors gets 11% stake in Nikola. And so if Nikola becomes a wildly successful company over years to come, General Motors will profit from that. It will have an ownership stake and it will be able to benefit from Nikola doing well. At the end of the day, this is about automakers realizing that there's only going to be a few platforms out there for electric vehicles. GM's Altium battery technology will be at the heart of its electric vehicle platform, and it now is working with Nikola. They have an arrangement, a partnership with Honda that may be part of the uh, Altium battery technology in the future as well. So for General Motors, it is getting more size and scale for its EV facilities, its EV technology. And for Nikola, this gives them a, a place where they're gonna have the Badger pickup truck built, a steady supply not only of EV technology, but also fuel cells for its hydrogen fuel cell business. Remember, they're building hydrogen fuel cell semi trucks. They'll now have General Motors supplying them, and it's gonna save about $4 billion. Okay, let's get to our sound check. Here's a roundup of the day's biggest action and what the top newsmakers and business leaders had to say on CNBC's airwaves. We've regained 50% of the jobs lost during those horrific months of March and April, and now we, we have to get the remaining 50% back, and that's why the president remains committed to achieving a phase four agreement that can pass both houses of, of, of uh, Congress and he can sign into law.
is that this company, we talk about 5G wearables, augmented reality, something the company doesn't get a lot of credit for. I believe that this can trade at 35 times 2022 earnings. If that's the case, if I'm accurate, we're talking about a three and a half trillion dollar stock. It is difficult and going to continue to be difficult for these major urban destinations. A lot of our travelers are looking for the beach locations. They're looking for uh, rural. They're looking for the hiking adventures. They're looking for something that doesn't have a lot of people. When a vaccine comes and, and you know, good word on the street says it's not too far away, uh, that's gonna release what we believe is a tremendous amount of pent up demand. In addition to all the technology that we're bringing in the value from both an Ultium and a Hydrotech technology perspective, there also then is, uh, we'll be doing the manufacturing and validation and engineering. So all of that comes together. And again, it's for the Badger, but it's also for the fuel cell, fuel cell technology for the Nikolai uh, products in the uh, class seven and eight truck business. So this is a huge growth opportunity for us. GM is a perfect partner to be able to build the Badger. The truck's coming out. Um, Nikola's building out hydrogen networks. I mean, we just couldn't be more happy with this partnership. It's, it, that's why people are rewarding us. It's, it's a long-term play. It's the ability to get in early. And that's what Nikola is. It's a, it's a great relationship with GM. All right, as of today, we are exactly eight weeks out from the presidential election. And with the US fatality count closing in on 200,000 lives lost and 8% of the country still unemployed, the coronavirus and the government's subsequent response are top of mind issues. And according to multiple reports, as the days tick down, President Trump is increasingly trying to seal his re-election by introducing a vaccine before Election Day. A week and a half ago, the FDA commissioner went on the record saying the agency would be willing to approve a vaccine before phase three trials conclude. In the world of drug development, phase three trials are when the researchers test a large number of people to compare an experimental treatment to standard therapies and then evaluate the overall risks. Now, the FDA commissioner insisted the sped up approval timeline would not result from any administration pressure. And the White House put out a statement this week promising Trump has no intention of cutting corners when it comes to vaccine development. However, in an unusual move, the CEOs of nine leading drug companies all made a pledge today to focus on safety first in their vaccine efforts. They also all promised not to seek regulatory approval until that safety had been established in phase three trials. CNBC's Meg Terrell can break down this pledge and explain exactly how the search for a vaccine became so politicized. These nine companies are some of the biggest drug makers in the world, and they are the front runners in a race for a COVID-19 vaccine. And they are calling this a historic pledge. And essentially what it does is uh, has them signing on to say that they will put the safety of COVID-19 vaccines first and adhere to the highest scientific and ethical standards in developing these vaccines. Uh, one of the pledges is that they will not seek approval or emergency use authorization until the vaccines have proven their safety and efficacy in a phase three trial. And this is unique because you never see pharmaceutical companies uh, of this size and of this scale really uh, working together on a pledge like this. Uh, nothing about this pandemic obviously is precedented. And this is yet another example of sort of the unprecedented nature of the speed of this vaccine work, uh, but also the pressure that's being put on it. And the real concern uh, from the public that these vaccines are being pushed forward so quickly uh, that there could be concerns about their safety. And so the industry really sees a need to step in and try to assure the public that it is putting safety first. Well, the FDA over recent years has found ways to accelerate the regulatory process for important medicines. And of course, we're in a pandemic, the likes of which we haven't seen in a century. And so, of course, the FDA is under pressure to work as quickly as it can. But there is an additional element of pressure being put on the FDA very explicitly by the president in a tweet in late August. Uh, the president suggested that the FDA might be in some way trying to delay approval of a vaccine until after the 
election. So there is very real concern about the pressure that the president is putting on the FDA. Even as the White House has said, there is no political pressure to rush this vaccine along. The sort of coalescing of all of the events here, the fact that Pfizer has said that it expects data on its vaccine by the end of October, the fact that the CDC has asked governors to make sure their states are ready to distribute a vaccine by November 1st, and the fact that the election is scheduled for November 3rd has made everybody in this very political environment be very skittish about the fact that these things are all happening at the same time. And of course, the drug makers aren't responsible for approving or evaluating vaccines. That is the FDA's job. So in some ways, it's very fascinating to see this industry that is at the bottom of public opinion polls. Go back to September, a Gallup poll shows that they are the most uh, disliked industry in the United States. The fact that they are being lauded for assuring vaccine safety uh, is a really interesting commentary on uh, where we are in terms of confidence uh, in the process around um, vaccine development and evaluation. Okay, time for the numbers round. First up, 968,000. For the first time since March, more than 900,000 passengers passed through the country's airports, according to TSA traffic data. On September 4th, the Friday before Labor Day weekend, 968,000 people passed through TSA checkpoints. But the three-day weekend may have been a last hurrah of sorts for the beleaguered industry. September and October are historically slow months for airlines. Plus, most companies are still holding off on business travel. And remember, airlines have already announced tens of thousands of layoffs to take effect in October in the absence of additional government aid. Next, 2,495. Peloton is launching a new, more expensive bike with a rotating screen called the Bike Plus, which will be available starting tomorrow for $2,495. Now, the original Peloton bike, which usually costs about $2,200, will now cost about $1,900. Peloton is also releasing a more expensive treadmill called the Tread Plus, which will retail for more than $4,200 in the U.S. once it becomes available in 2021. Demand for Peloton's at-home workouts has skyrocketed during the pandemic, while well, gyms were closed for months and people developed new habits. Peloton stock has surged more than 215% so far this year. And finally, two million. The wildfires ravaging the West Coast have set a grisly record. This year, more than two million acres of land scorched by the fires in California alone. The Creek Fire is currently 0% contained, and as of Monday night, 50 people were trapped near Lake Edison in Northern California, according to the Fresno County Fire Department. And that's just one of more than two dozen major fires caused by 12,000 lightning strikes in the last three weeks, according to Cal Fire. The days ahead may be worse. September and October are historically the worst fire months in California. And yesterday, the state's largest utility company, PG&E, was preparing to cut power to more than 170,000 households in Northern California to avoid new fires caused by electric lines and equipment. That's it for After Hours, but before we go, here's one more thing to keep an eye on. We're looking out for a vote in the Senate this week on a new coronavirus stimulus bill. Now, don't get too excited. Congressional Democrats are opposed to what's cooking in the Senate, which Majority Leader Mitch McConnell calls, quote, targeted, which is just code for it spends less money than the Democrats in the House want. Stay up to date with stimulus negotiations and the legislation currently moving through the Senate by going to CNBC.com and downloading the CNBC app. We'll be right here in our home office every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday with a new edition of After Hours, so be sure to catch us then.